Let's bring on the sources. We will start with the basic calibration isotope, cesium-137. That works fine, but that's still just around 50 microsieverts, and that's what they promised in the manual. But anyway, let's turn on the click because that consumes much more voltage. And do that again. That works just fine. No current crashes. No flickering of the screen as they used to be before. And the voltage, oh, let's hold this in front. The voltage is just about 3.5 volts as it is supposed to be. It used to drop before. So oh, that's good. Here's a strontium 90 beta source. I'm gonna approach that. And again, we've got 170 microsieverts here. And no crashing. And the voltage is 3.38 volts. Still good enough. And now here comes the worst nightmare of Gamma Scout. Densely ionizing heavy big alpha particles. It's not crashing, not even with the clicker on. And it works. No more crashes. Even at 400 microsieverts. 500, nearly, nearing 500 microsieverts now. Still doesn't crash. The most extreme test that I can commit is the Warbird altimeter. Doped with radium, which is, among others, an alpha emitter. So, what's happening to you now? Here's your proper stress test. Seven hundred, eight hundred, still no flickering of the screen. Yeah, probably didn't reach the perfect spot, that's why it's just eight hundred. Trying to adjust. Nine hundred ten, nine hundred thirty, nine hundred fifty, nine hundred seventy, a thousand microsievert. It has reached a thousand microsieverts with the clicker on and no single crash, no drop in voltage, no random drops in reading back to zero or back to the number that cannot be. It did it. Yep. That is very, very good. Excellent. It works reliably to a thousand microsieverts like it is supposed to be, like the manual promised us, so that's really on the reading, on the improved Gamma Scout, now that's a 5 stars for me. So, in total, what I'm saying about the Gamma Scout is 
It's a very tiny and very handy device, that's for sure. You can carry it in the field easily, especially as you can buy specially fit belt pouches like this one. The new version allows you to switch over and open the USB uh, stuff as well, and you can still click all the buttons and stuff. The old version, once again, was really lousy and covered the Geiger Muller tube, and that is really the most stupid thing I've ever seen. And uh, had no way to open it, so you'd always have to remove it if you wanted to get the data out. So, well, the old one it sucks. But with the new port, you can carry it around on your belt and wherever, and it's a really tiny device. Yeah, we're reaching about over one microsieve, but I'm sorry. Anyway, it's a really nice and handy device. Um, yeah, it's got alpha beta, it measures alpha beta and gamma radiation reliably up to a thousand microsieverts now, and that is very good. And um, yeah, so if you need a very small device that can do a lot of stuff like lock for 10 years or just lock minutely for 10 hours or whatever, and you need a USB connection so you can get the data precisely and you want to make uh, very accurate measurements and stuff, um, then I can say I could recommend the Gamma Scout despite its high price because it was like 350 euros for the alert version which is about just about 450 US dollars right now, so that's a really, really quite expensive piece of equipment. Especially if you take into consideration that the software is absolutely lousy, and the rest is not perfect as well, with like that hatch not opening properly and some of the buttons still being a bit hard to press, and that's uh, probably not ideal as well. And but in, in total, it's, it's, I think it's a good device, but the thing is, Still, it's still quite highly overpriced, but on the other hand, I don't really know any other device that has uh, this very tiny uh, net is so tiny so you can take it anywhere and it has all the functionalities and stuff, so if you really need a device that can do all the stuff, I guess I can still recommend the Gamma Scout, yeah. But if you just want to go prospecting for uranium or want to know if something is radioactive or not radioactive, I think you're probably much much better off with some Russian Geiger counters like that was used to uh, to find uranium loads by the uranium miners. Let's put this away a bit. And uh, yeah, I don't think uh, if you just want to go prospecting for uranium or whatever, you you don't really need a Gamma Scout. You can just use any Geiger counter for a much cheaper price that has the same functionality or even better functionality if you've got a pancake probe that is better for prospecting and stuff. But yeah. If you seriously need to log all this stuff, I'd say the Gamma Scout is quite good. So, um, I'd say the Gamma Scout itself gets, because it's now really reliable up to a thousand microsieverts and has the improved buttons, it still gets a total of four stars. Um, if you take the price into consideration, probably it just gets three stars out of five, we're saying, yeah. Uh, the software, as I said, is just a mere two stars, if at all. And, um, yeah, the, the guys at the company seem a bit dodgy by using smoke detectors and pitch blender to test their devices. I, I think that's really unprofessional. But still, well, the device they're delivering is, is quite okay for the price, I think. By the way, if you're a manufacturer and you sell equipment to measure ionizing radiation, then feel free to set me one of your devices and I will test them thoroughly and give them a proper review. Please keep in mind though that I cannot be purchased for money so I will not tell whatever you want me to tell to other people, but I will give it a proper review and if your device is good then uh, you will get a very good advertising which uh, probably thousands of people would see for just the price of one unit which I'm going to keep. So consider that. Thanks for watching.